What else should teachers know about grammar? Another issue that's related to grammar instruction is implicit and explicit knowledge. So as language users, we have a lot of implicit knowledge about how the grammar of a language works, but we can't always explicitly state that knowledge. And so we have to be able to begin to explicitly talk about the grammar and the structures of the language. Back when I was a young student learning Spanish for the first time, I had a lot of implicit knowledge about the grammar of my native language. But when I went to learn a new language, I didn't make much progress until I could start to explicitly recognize patterns in that new language. Another important thing about teaching grammar is that in order to fully address grammar and grammatical structure, we have to pay attention to form and function. Form refers to the actual structure or formation of words, phrases, and clauses. We have many forms in English, and teaching grammar means teaching how to control and how to use those structures. For example, the words, the tasty cookies, is a noun phrase because it has the noun cookies in it, and that's the form of this phrase. However, we won't get very far in explaining how to use English if we don't also consider the function of words and phrases. We can talk about the grammatical function of particular forms or how that form relates to other words or phrases in the sentence. So for example, the tasty cookies could be the subject, like in the sentence, the tasty cookies are on the table. Or it could be the object of a verb, I love the tasty cookies. This is the syntactic or grammatical function of the phrase. In addition to that local function within a clause, we can also talk about the discourse function. The discourse function is what the grammatical structures are allowing us to do in the language. So for example, we might talk about passive voice. An example of passive voice is, the cookies were left in the oven too long. One of the discourse functions of passive voice is to focus on something other than the agent of the verb. So in this example, instead of saying, I left the cookies in the oven too long, I can use the passive to focus more on the cookies and less on my failure as a baker. Discourse function is important in teaching grammar because we often have multiple ways to express the same idea. But the structures we use to convey that idea can influence how it is perceived. A final thing that I'll mention is this idea of variation in grammar. Based on very large studies of authentic language, we know that in different situations, speakers and writers use grammar in different ways. So the grammar that I'm using to talk to you today is not the same as the grammar that I would use in an email or in writing an academic paper. And we know that when people have to learn how to use language in different situations, they have to learn how to control a large range of different grammatical structures. And this is the concept that we call register variation. So learning to speak a language or write a language also means learning how to produce these different structures in different contexts. Professor Gray emphasized that there is a lot that teachers should know about grammar. We'll ask her advice for teaching grammar in the next video.